Hey, oh, I've been using KiCad for so many years, but I think I've finally figured out managing third-party components. So I wanted to make a video and just show through my process of how I search for components, import them into KiCad, um, and actually sort of manage them in a quick manner because prior to this, it just took bloody forever to actually, um, you know, get components in and actually be able to use them. There's a good number of components on KiCad, but they, they're not enough just for, for what you need to do. So first of all, I'll go through how I actually go about looking for components, and this might be something that people already know, know about. But if you're using a Chrome browser like Brave or um, Google Chrome, you can go to Settings, and then inside Settings, go to Search Engine, Manage Search Engines and Site, uh, site Search. And so here, down the bottom, in the site search, I've got these little extensions made up. Um, so there's some there for different providers, electronics providers, um, and there's also some for some uh, component management. So for this, let's say I wanted to search for a part on uh, DigiKey. I just type uh, this colon or whatever, DK, search DigiKey, and I'll say oh, 358. That's what I want to look at, this op amp. So it automatically searches on DigiKey. On, uh, I'm in Australia, so it's using the AU extension. And straight away I can get in and see exactly what, what's available. The alternative is going DigiKey key and searching online, you know, on Google or whatever. Then going onto the, the website, LM358. And it just takes too long to actually get things done. Perhaps you want to search multiple websites. You can do E14, uh, which is going to bring up Element 14 for for me in Australia, which is also Farnell for other people around the world. But you could do LM358 there as well, and it'll get it up straight away. So once we've like found a component that we're interested in, let's say we like this package here, uh, or we'll go with this one. What we can do then is we want to actually find out um, whereabouts we can get the symbols and also the footprints and hopefully get a 3D model of it as well. So so what I'm using there is EDA and this is going to Snap EDA which is a provider of these kinds of uh, third-party components. So here you can see that um, when I search for that, so this EDA space that and it takes me to the site, um, when I search for that, you can see on the right hand side that it tells you that we've got the symbol, we've got the footprint, we've got the 3D model. There's also a simulation is available because this is an op amp, so um, they'll have simulations there. And this is, yeah, this is looking pretty good for us. So what we can do is click on that component, and here you can see, yep, it all looks pretty good to me. It also says it's a, um, a vertified component. So like uh, up here, this created by Snap EDA means I think way more than uh, not the part's gonna be right in terms of the, um, in terms of whether or not the components actually match up with the pin markings. Uh, the other one is uh, Ultra Librarian. So you can put, um, I just use UL in that one. So in my search engine here down this Ultra Librarian UL so in that one, yeah, you can just, that's the part I'm looking for. Um, and here you can see the, the problem with the Ultra Librarian is that with this setup here, although the uh, the pin, pin actually matches, like there's all this dead space in the middle. So it means that once you import the component, you end up spending a bit of time trying to actually um, modify it for, um, for what you want. And also you, you sort of don't really want an op amp to look like this. You sort of want an op amp to look like, uh, um, to look like an actual symbol of an op amp uh, because this makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on when you look into the schematic. But anyway, um, I digress. So let's say, yep, all right, so I like this symbol and uh, footprint. You can download it. Um, I'm obviously using KiCad version six. So I'll download that. So the good thing about when you download it from EDA is that they name it exactly what the component is. Whatever the component you downloaded, that's what it's called. So let's say, for example, we had a KiCad project. So I'm gonna open up KiCad here and I'm gonna create a new project here and I'm just gonna do it on my desktop and we're gonna call it an untitled project. 
So within our project, um, I'll actually go and CD into my desktop. So, CD so within that, um, we've got our, our project and we've also got our PCB that we haven't uh, made yet and also our schematic. So what we what we would normally do, and I think this is the best way to go about it, is to create a, um, a component directory. Um, make the components, cd components, and then we're going to open that up there. So now we can put our zip file into, oh geez, we'll put our zip file here into our components. Then we can unzip that and we sort of want to organize things a little bit. So we want to have an op amp. So we put that into there. We can move that to the bin. Oh, I might leave it for the moment. Yeah, I'll move it to bin. And then we can go through and you can see this is uh, what Snap EDA has given us. A keycad model, a step file, and a symbol. You can see that the model, this is actually for the footprint, is using the actual um, footprint that the part is rather than the part name. And that can be kind of confusing because you sort of have to try and remind yourself of what uh, what part am I using, uh, what actual footprint goes with it. It just makes a bit of a problem later on down the line. So I think it's better actually to name, um, name that footprint the same as the actual um, part that you're using. So anyway, so let's say we went into KeyCAD and now we open up our untitled, uh, our untitled schematic. We go to Preferences, Manage Symbol Libraries, and the inside there we've got our Project Libraries, which has everything that KeyCAD sort of comes with the default, and we've got our Project Specific Libraries. So within that, we can open up Components, Op Amp, um, click on our symbol, and now we have that um, Op Amp. You can see here that it's added this path substitution at the start here. So this is really good because it means that the location of that component is relative to the KiCad project that you have. So if somebody loaded this on a different computer, they would actually be able to open up an actual, and if you actually provided with the, the symbols and components with them, they'd actually be able to open up your schematic and straight away start to be able to edit them, which would be super handy for them. Um, and also handy for you if you want to change computers or something like that. So anyway, once we've done that, we click OK down the bottom here, and let's just see if we can find our component, the LME358. Uh, that's the one there, that's the one we wanted. You can see these. this is probably a better style. Let's see, we've got these um, different ones here. But anyway, just for our, for our needs, this is, this is what we get. So we can put that wherever we want, and that's sorted. The problem is that all we've done now is just import a schematic symbol. We haven't actually imported the footprint. So then we have to go to this, go to Manage Footprint Libraries, Project Specific Libraries, open that, Components, Opam, that. Then we this one here, you don't actually click on anything. You just say it's in with this directory here. And now it, you can see now it's added that part relative directory. Um, now we can add in our footprint. So we go LM358 and there it is there. So we can place that component and it's all imported. Now this is how I used to do it in the past and it's just too tiresome to actually import these kinds of components. So what I've done is I've created a little command line interface to do this all for you so you don't even have to worry about importing them all, um, anything at all basically. So let's say, for example, we get out of here, we go back to our untitled project, and we delete, um, um, we'll delete the components directory. Also get rid of the backups. And so we've just basically got a fresh project here. So what we can do is, I've written this, this on, uh, this is open source as well, it's MIT license. Um, you can go to KiCad, component handler, on uh, GitHub, I'll put the link in the description down below. But anyway, 
what it allows you to do, it's called Candle, and what it allows you to do is to import these things automatically into KeyCAD. So if we go to CD Desktop Untitled, so this is in our, we've, we're in our project directory here. We can do Candle. This is after you downloaded the um, downloaded the repository. You can do a Candle I, and that will initialize the component directories. So if we now open this back up again, you can see our components directory is back. But inside here, we've now got an external um, components. And then we've got our three models, footprints, and also a temporary directory. And this is actually where we'll house all the um, all, all the symbols and components that we'll be uh, importing into the into the project. So what we can do then is let's go back to our footprint and let's download it again, version six or later. So we'll go save, and now in our temporary directory, we want to put that file that we just downloaded. And then what we want to do is go back to our command line here. We can do a candle.sh-help. This is going to tell us exactly what we need to put in. So our, our file here is called lm358psr. So that's the, that's the file we want to import into KiCad. So what we do is candle, and then we put in a type. So what type of component is this? It's an op amp. And the file name of it is lm358psr.zip. You don't have to put a, um, you don't have to put a official path to it because everything's gonna be looking inside this temporary directory here. And what we can do is just click enter, what, and that's going to extract all the different components there. And you can see that it's um, opened up our zip file as well. So if we go back, now if we look in 3D models here, we see there's a file, uh, a folder here, directory, with our model here. Uh, so this is our 3D model. And then uh, in our footprints, we've got an opamp.pretty um, folder here. And inside that, we've got our, our model. And notice that before when we downloaded it, um, and you can actually see it here, when we downloaded it, it was called um, after the actual footprint that the device is, the component is using, but now it's been renamed to actually the component name. And then finally in here, we've also got our symbols directory, uh, our symbol for that component. So that's pretty cool and all. So it's downloaded them, but we still, what we don't want to do is we don't want to go have to go into KiCad to actually um, try to actually uh, import all these things manually. So all we have to do is do a candle.sh with a capital R. So that refreshes the, um, the cache that's for both the symbols and the tables inside the KiCad, um, in, inside KiCad. So now let's say we went to our project here. We went to keycad.sh. We go to manage symbol libraries and you'll see that it's now pointing at this directory here, this external symbols op amp lm358 symbol. So if we st we can't have that old component anymore, we have to make a, a new one. And it's going to be under this new name here, this external op amp lm358 psr. So you just go yes, place that, and now that's sorted. And the same goes with our with our PCB. So this symbol here doesn't exist anymore because we've refreshed the project. So what we got is LM358, an external op amp, LM358, already imported. So I'll just go through that one more time because um, it's kind of confusing because you still had that previous component there. But let's say we went back to EDA and we've got a different component. Let's say we went for a um, this is a uh, battery holder for a 18650 cell. So we click on that and it has the symbols and footprints and everything that we need. So we can download it, KiCad, version six. We'll say download. Then we wanna just go to our temporary directory here. We put the file that we just downloaded, the battery, into that directory. 
Now all we do is we open up our terminal here. And so we're going to do a uh, candle. It's a type, so the type is going to be a battery. Um, it's going to be for an 18650. Just to create it a little bit more descriptive. And then we're going to do a 1043-zip, which is the component name of the um, of the file that we just downloaded. So we'll run that as well, and you can see that it's it's done that. You can also do a candle uh, L, and that'll list out what's available. So we've got a battery holder and now an op amp. And then finally, we just do a. We've got to get out of this first. Get out of the um, repository. And then we'll do a candle as H refresh. So now you can see that it's processing the battery holder and processing both the op amp as well. So if we go back to our file here, open up our project, and now if we want to import that that battery thing, we just go 043 battery holder. Done. Perfect. Now we can discharge it, uh, discard the changes there. Now if we wanted to go to our PCB and we wanted to import that, there's our battery. We don't have to go through that whole process of like importing them for each single component that just took, takes forever. You just refresh it and there's the components available to you. The other thing that I've made that's kind of cool as well is, so at the moment what we've got is our project is called Untitled. Um, and a lot of the time when you're starting a KiCad project, you forget, you, you, you don't think of a really good name for it or the, the name sort of changes as the project progresses. So what we can do instead is I've created another, um, uh, another repository here. And this one's called um, Rename. And this is just for ZSH users, um, so people on Macs. But what you can do here is you can use this keycad rename shell script and so for example we're inside our folder here so we can do a uh, keycad rename and the previous name was untitled and the new name we want to call it uh, wow oh, no we'll call it the best project and so what that's going to do is um, change the name of the project with inside the directory. So if we clear this, ls one so now it's called the best project and this is all our backups for the project. So if we go back one more, we just got to change the name manually of our parent folder because we can't change it while we're actually um, inside that directory. So now our best project And if we open up again, uh, if we go actually open up our KiCad project, and we go to our the best project, and now we go to our symbol and we go 043, you can see that it all still works. Like all the components are still matched to the same project, and uh, you now get a new project name. So, yeah, that's a that's uh, sort of how we go about it, importing these um, components and stuff like that. So if you like that kind of thing, give the video a like, or if you like the, um, the tool, or if there's any problems with it, just put an issue in. Uh, what you have to do is, so let's say you're using the component handler, you can create an issue here, just go new issue, and then I'll see the issue, and just put a link to the component that you're having problems with, and then I'll sort it out, and then go from there. So uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.